Oh, I'm sweating. It's really, really hot in here. Gosh. A bit sweaty. For most of us in the Northern Hemisphere, summer is apparently here. I mean, it's been thunder and lightning outside here today in Sweden. But generally, there's long days. We've had warm sunshine. I have to say, yesterday it was 29 degrees outside. Went for a skinny dip in the sea. It was amazing. And at this time of year, there are so many outdoor opportunities for fun. And that can be, you know, barbecues, holiday trips, countless social events. So things like going to the pop garden or going for picnics or going to the beach. There can just be so many things. And it is very easy to worry about undoing all the hard work that you might have put in in your fitness journey over the past few months or even year. But here's some good news because I think for a lot of people, there is this dichotomy between having fun and staying fit and you can't do both at the same time. Now, I don't believe that because I generally stay pretty fit and have fun at the same time. But for a lot of us, it's kind of down to that all or nothing mentality. So I'm either having all the fun, drinking all the drink and eating all the food, or I'm slogging away in the gym eating rabbit food. And absolutely, I work with my clients to make sure that they do not fall into that trap because having fun and staying fit are not mutually exclusive. So what I want to talk about today is how we can, I know it's very unsexy, which is maybe why I've got my top off, so I've got your attention, um, to try and balance, find balance um, between having crazy amounts of fun and staying fit, because you can have balance, you can have harmony. Um, it is possible to stay fit and have fun at the same time. What I want to dive into first is when you're going on an actual holiday, so you're going away for maybe a week or two. And I think it doesn't start when you get to the airport. I think we need to look at what you need to do before you go. Now, I do appreciate it is the end of June when I'm recording this, which means that, you know, a lot of you might be on holiday already or your holiday might be a couple of weeks away. But whenever you go on holiday, whether it's in the summer or actually any time of year, planning ahead is absolutely key. And so what you need to do is maximize the time, make the most of it when you're at home to dial in on your training and nutrition. But what I'm not saying is you should do some crazy amounts of restriction and beast yourself with cardio in the weeks running up to your holiday. Ideally, you will have been on a fitness and uh, potentially fat loss plan, if that's your goal, um, for a few months working with a coach and actually doing it in a really sensible way. Because what I don't think is very good is when people crash diet. And actually, it doesn't really work because when I crash diet or I'm in over restriction, I often end up overeating at other points. So actually, I don't lose as much weight as I think I will. And then when I go away, I'm just like off the rails. So if you can have that skill of moderation and balance built in before you even go and you've put in the work before you go I think you're setting yourself up for a much much better place for when you are actually on holiday and you can enjoy yourself okay so we're still not at the airport um what should you pack because um when I go away I don't think well this is just time off from normal life I have an identity, I've built an identity, and I've become a person who trains. It's just what I do. So it brings me energy, I enjoy it. Um, it's time away from uh, the people I might be on holiday with just so I get a bit of my own mental space, which I think is super, super healthy because sometimes if you're on holiday with your family and you're in a villa or you're in a hotel room, it can feel quite, and maybe you don't, tell my husband this or, you know, tell my family or tell your family or partner, you know, you can feel a bit trapped at times. That sounds so bad, but a little bit overwhelmed by having people around all the time. And so it is really, really healthy just to get your own headspace at times. So when I go away, I do take workout gear with me. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm turning a holiday into a fitness boot camp by any means, but if you have your trainers handy, it means you can go for a run or you can go for a walk whenever you feel the urge. Now, also, when you are away, just think about sightseeing on foot or, you know, even taking a bike. Those can be fantastic ways to stay active while you're away and you're exploring new places. So it's not all about, you know, going for a run or, 
you know, beasting yourself, doing a crazy hit cardio session by the pool. Totally do that if you want. I might do that occasionally. But just generally staying active when you are away is really good. So what do I pack when I go away? So I take my workout gear. I take my train, uh, my trainers or what do you call them in the States? Running, running shoes, running sneakers. Anyway, I take those so that I can go for a run if and when I want. But I also take some resistance bands. Now, these are really, really help, helpful because they're lightweight. They don't take up much space and they're really, really versatile. And they can allow you to do, you know, a quick room workout or even a beach exercise routine. Um, and, you know, it can be quite good for a little disco pump before you go out in the evening. You know, get those biceps uh, pumped up. So I think resistance bands, if you don't have any, are actually really good to take with you. The adventure begins as soon as you really hit the airport, doesn't it? So as I mentioned, skip airline food and pack a protein-rich filling meal. Have that instead. Instead of maybe going for the higher calorie foods that you might not know the nutritional value, I would maybe pop to Boots or go to Pret and grab a sandwich because you can bung those into MyFitnessPal. You can understand the nutritional value and you can still have something pretty tasty um, and still help you stay on track so that you can maybe plan for that evening meal when you do arrive. Now, air travel can be very dehydrating and thirst can often be confused as hunger, which often means that we end up overeating. So I try and have a full bottle of water. Now, most airports, you can fill up your water bottle. I think all the airports right now, um, but also limit alcohol and caffeine, which can feel you leaving really dehydrated. When you get on a plane, try and take some snacks because you don't want to be stranded with a rumbling stomach and only have you know, Pringles and chocolate and muffins and things like that. They, they often sell on flights. You don't want to be stranded with just those options. So, you know, a protein bar, depending on the length of the flight, you might be able to take some chicken. It might smell when you open it. I'm not sure the people around you will like that. Um, obviously, be careful with nuts. Um, they can be quite high in fat. But obviously, if you are on a flight, there might be people that have a nut allergy. So just be careful with those as well. Um, but I would say I always pack my bag with protein bars, maybe some biltong, actually. Um, yeah. What's my favorite protein bar at the moment? It's the Barbells ones, probably. I really like the white salty peanut, but they seem to have stopped doing it. So I've gone back to the grenade one. I'm not sure it's quite as good, but I don't know why Barbells have stopped doing it. Bear bells, Barbells, Bear Bells. You know the one I mean. We've landed. Here are some tips to help you enjoy the breakfast buffet. You know, the booze, the beach club, and potentially the men. Is that part of this? Oh, maybe that was a different podcast. Anyway, let's talk about mindset first. Ideally, you're on holiday. You're there to relax, to help you make memories, uh, to enjoy yourself, to spend time with loved ones and friends and family, and to explore. And do you know what? That means being present. Now, I used to be really bad at this because I would take my phone. I still take my phone everywhere, but, you know, I'd be checking work emails. I'd be checking, you know, how my client's doing, checking the progress. Factor in a time of day if you need to do that, but just make it, schedule it in. Okay. Otherwise, if you're going to continue doing those things throughout the day, it's really going to take you away from being present. Now, you can um, download app blockers which means that you can take a social media break. You can take an email break for a set period of time during the, during the day. Now, if somebody really wants to get in touch with you, I'm sure they will find a way. And so if you are present, you're going to be more mindful and really start making those memories because they'll really impact you. You'll be spending time with your friends and family and it'll really help you explore and absorb the surroundings and really relish the experience because that's what you're there for, um, to have that experience, not to check your phone up the top of a hike that you might have gone up. Now, obviously, you can take your phone because you'll need that for the camera. You want to take lots of photos, but still be present. Now, another mindset point is that if you do choose, and remember, this is a choice, to eat or drink more than you intended, do not beat yourself up because your choice in that moment was because your priorities shifted. Your priority in that moment was to have a spontaneous night out, let's say. That was the priority. You chose that as being more important 
than your fitness and fat loss goals. And that is absolutely fine. If it just happens once every so often, I would just say, own it, enjoy it, and just understand that it might take you just a wee bit longer to achieve your fitness goals. It is not the end of the world. So you need to weigh those things up in the moment, but don't stress about it. You've got to work out what is more important for you and just own it. Nobody is forcing you to do anything. This is all a choice and these things aren't happening to you. And I do talk about this with my clients is about taking responsibility. And that is kind of empowering and freeing because seeing that the world is not just throwing things at me, it's how I respond to things um, and respond to events. That is much more important and much more empowering, I think. Okay, what about some of the practical things that we can do? Now, if you are in a villa, if you're anything like us, um, you'll dump your bags at the villa, if you're allowed in at that point, um, and then you will go to the nearest supermarket. So when we're in Mallorca, we often go to Eroski, and we get very, very overexcited by all the food that we can have there. And there's some great fruit and veg, stock up on berries, on flat peaches, um, and things for breakfast, I get big tubs of like 0% fat Greek yogurt or even 2% or 4%, which are light, but they're still um, very tasty. And they're high in protein, which means they're quite filling. So eggs are very good, um, maybe some ham. Now, there is a tendency when people go away at breakfast, they'll have, you know, like baguette and they'll have croissants and they'll have lots of pastries. I would try and avoid those as much as possible. Maybe have the occasional one while you're away, but maybe not every day. Um, so still focus on having a high protein breakfast. So Greek yogurt, eggs, ham, those kinds of things are going to set you up for a really good day um, by the pool, at the beach, or if you are going for walks or things like that. Booze. This is one of the most obvious ones. Now, I don't really drink. Um, I would never say that I don't drink because occasionally I will have something. Um, and that's just a personal choice. I don't like having a hangover. I really suffer with them now, and it's probably because I don't drink. I'm out of practice, as people joke. But I feel so much better not drinking. Um, because when I drank, I used to drink quite a lot um, on nights out and things like that. Um, and... I would just make really poor decisions, not just nutritional, but just really bad decisions, which nobody needs. And particularly when you've got a hangover, I don't want that guilt and regret. And I want to wake up the next day feeling fresh and going for a run and doing things that actually give me energy rather than things that zap my energy. But do try and consider enjoying alcohol in moderation. And I know that sounds a little bit boring and moderation sounds like it could be really easy but it's not. It's a skill that needs to be practiced. So if you intend to drink in moderation and you don't get it right, do not stress if you don't get it right the first time. But other things that you can do to try and uh, stay a little bit more on track is opt for lower calorie options. So things like smaller glasses of wine. Cava is actually surprisingly low in calories. Um, I also recommend going for clear spirits with calorie-free mixers, so things like vodka soda, gin, and slimline tonic, unless you are away with my dad, uh, who, when he pours gin measures, we call them Bill measures. His name is Bill. Um, and yeah, I don't know if he was like Spanish or something in a former life, because his measures are, are really, really big. And uh, yeah, there's going to be more calories in that than just a 25 mil. Um, I would also remember to hydrate between uh, alcoholic drinks as well. So drink water between, um, between alcoholic drinks. I'm also a fan of non-alcoholic beers these days. They're actually pretty good and they're often very low in calories. And if you've got a beer, particularly if you've poured it into a glass, what that does is it puts off those, why aren't you drinking saboteurs? Because if they see you with a drink in your hand, they're not going to ask any questions. If you drink too much alcohol, that's probably going to affect your willpower when it comes to nutrition and maybe some of the other things that we're going to talk about today. So next up, oh, I hate this word, treats. But I would say only go for 
the higher calorie, really tasty, less nutritious foods that you genuinely enjoy, okay? So really choose your indulgence, okay? And only go for them because they're really tasty and you genuinely like them. And I'd suggest maybe not having them every single day. If you have them a little less frequently, they'll actually taste better. Honestly, try it. Okay, if you're having a pan of chocolate every single day, you'll just get used to it. It's just like, nom, 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 same pan of chocolate. But if you're having it maybe once a week and really savor it and enjoy it, oh, that's good. Or what's it we have in Mallorca? Empanada? Empanada. Empanada, is that the one with meat in it? No, this is like a pastry with dusting of icing sugar on it. <sighs> Someone's going to smack me in the comments for getting that wrong. Okay. Um, yes. And maybe this is a mindset point again. Instead of viewing this as a restriction, oh, I'm not allowed a pan of chocolate today because I had one yesterday. If you consider it as a deliberate choice, then it's more empowering. You're choosing to do that. You get to choose. You get to say, no, I don't need that today. And by doing that, you're also saying yes to your fitness goal and your fat loss goal. Now, if you are going out for dinner, I would also think about planning ahead. And if you're anticipating, you know, a special meal or a dessert, um, that anticipation is actually part of the whole enjoyment. And anticipating makes that moment of indulgence even more yummy. So maybe you put off that indulgence to later in the day and then just savor it and think about it. So I'm not going to have a pan of chocolate this morning because I'm going to have a really nice creme brulee dessert tonight and I can't wait to have it. It's going to be really good. That anticipation can really enhance the whole experience. Now, when you are eating out, you will often be served larger portions than you might normally make yourself. While you might not be able to control what is on your plate, you do have the final say on how much you actually eat. And remember, you don't always have to clear your plate. You are not a human bin. Okay, I say this to my clients all the time. You are not a human bin. I say it to my clients who have children because they're always like picking um, the leftovers that the kids have left. They're, and they're really, really worried about, you know, not clearing their plates. And it seems like such a waste. You are not a human being. Your priority is not clearing that food, which has already been made, okay? Your priority is you and your fitness journey and your fat loss goals. You do not need to eat things that you don't like as well, or if there's too much of it and you're feeling full or somebody else's leftovers, you don't need to eat them. You're not a human being. Repeat after me. You are not a human being. Another tip, and I do this even when I'm not on holiday. I get my clients to do this every single day, prioritize protein. Because if you're away and you are trying to stay on track to a large extent, but you know you don't want to track and you don't want to put things into my fitness pal, if you're in doubt, I would go for dishes based around a protein source. So like steak, chicken, or fish. Things like that are going to be much higher in protein. They'll keep you satiated. Um, and if you have that with vegetables, that's a really, really tasty meal, particularly if you're, I don't know, in the, in the med somewhere and it's barbecued. Oh, it's so, so yummy. Um, really, really tasty. Obviously, you might be faced with sauces. You might want a sauce to go with it. So, Or even if you're having pasta or something. I would say opt for tomato-based sauces. Um, rather than creamy sauces, and that will help keep the calories down. Now, you can always ask for sauces to be put on the side. Maybe not with pasta, obviously, but maybe if it's a peppercorn sauce or a garlic butter sauce that you're going to have with your steak or something like that. Okay, this is the big one because this is where people seem to lose control. The breakfast buffet at the hotel. But you have to remember, you do have full control. So I learned this tip just last year, actually, and it's actually a really good one. Um, and what I do now is I explore the buffet first. So I, without a plate, I don't take a plate. I have a look and see everything on offer 
Um, and I do that first without piling everything on a plate because otherwise I'm just going to go around and have a little bit of everything. And I don't need to do that. So what I do is I look at the buffet and decide what I want. Again, I probably would load up on protein and veg and minimize the carbs because it's not that carbs are bad. Carbs are not bad, but they're often very, very Moorish and often eat, lead to you eating more than you actually need. So if you have protein, you'll feel more satisfied without overindulging in Moorish carbs and pastries and desserts. Um, another tip other people use is to use a small plate, but that just makes me feel really sad. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure I'm a fan of the small plate. Anybody a fan of the small plate? No. Okay, another tip. Sharing is caring. Consider sharing your food. Consider sharing that pizza rather than having the whole one to yourself. Share a pizza and a salad. But honestly, most of the enjoyment of any food is actually in the first couple of bites or slices. So you'll still get that, you know, lovely dopamine hit um, because you're getting the taste of the pizza in the first couple of slices. But you're only having half the calories. So let's say share a salad, um, but do watch out for like creamy and oily dressings, put them on the side if you can, because sometimes salads can actually be more calorific than uh, other foods on the menu. So just be sensible with that. Next one. Slow down, cowboy. I'm not sure why I said it like that. But eating slowly is a good tip. It helps your body to register that it's getting full which in turn will reduce overeating and makes the meal much more enjoyable, okay? Because you won't have that, you know, oh, I'm totally stuffed feeling. So you're actually savoring it rather than just demolishing it. Um, so if you take your time with your food, enjoy it more, and you won't feel stuffed because you will probably stop eating when you're full. And remember, you're not a human being. Hope I'm not teaching you to suck eggs but I would suggest using a knife and fork I know it sounds a bit silly but if I eat with just a fork and sometimes I do that I do have a tendency to just you know like shovel the food into my face but if I've got a knife and fork it forces me to slow down a bit now chopsticks are also really good for that too I guess depending on the meal you're having and your chopstick proficiency you might be really really slow Another tip, the power of two. It just helps you make a decision. So when you're eating out, you get to choose two out of the four main options usually, because usually you've got four options of a starter, a main, a dessert, and some alcohol. And if you pick the two of the options that really, really speak to you, then that's going to really help you have the calorie content of your meal. So it means like having a starter and a main, a main and a dessert, a main and a drink, it doesn't mean when you do have alcohol to go crazy on the booze because, you know, if you sink 10 pints, that's probably the equivalent of a few meals. So I would still practice moderation, but it's a really good way of trying to control the amount of calories that you are, um, you're having. Now, I'm not saying do that every night of your holiday, but maybe you do that more often than not. And then on the other evenings, when you're out for a meal, you can really not have to think about the power of two. You just have everything because you've been very moderate the rest of the week and one or two nights off in your holiday will not break the bank. Well, it might from a monetary point of view. Depends where you are. Now, when it comes to desserts, I have a really sweet tooth. I'm from Scotland. I kind of grew up on sugar and I love ice cream. Um, but if I'm not genuinely excited about a dessert, I skip it now. Because if none of them actually appeal to you, it's better to pass, okay? Um, and as I say, the same goes for a disappointing dish. If it's not as good as you expected, don't eat it, just leave it. And I know that is counterintuitive and it's, uh, 
goes against everything we're often brought up to believe that you need to finish everything on your plate. But that approach is completely empowering. If you can say, no, I'm going to pass because it gives you a choice and it makes you feel less restricted and more in line with your goal. So if it's not as good, just leave it. Again, you are not a human bin. Okay, so that most of the nutritional stuff covered. I thought I'd be able to do this in 15 minutes. It's going to be a long one. So training, if you want to go to the gym, go to the gym. Don't feel guilty about it. You are now someone who just goes to the gym. It's part of your identity. It makes you feel good. And you can have that little disco pump before you go out in the evening. That sounds good, doesn't it? Um, or if you're by the pool or for a night out. And equally, you don't have to go to the gym because your body might thank you for a week off the gym. Now, I'd say listen to your body or, you know, have a chat to your coach. Because if you're just away for a week or 10 days, you will not undo all the good work in that time. Even, a, even two weeks. I would say after two weeks, definitely get back to the gym. But if I'm on a pool or a beach holiday, I, I generally do go to the gym. Um, and it's often when the rest of the crew, my family or my friends who I'm away with, if they're having a siesta or, you know, in the latter part of the day, um, I will probably go to the gym or I might go in the morning before we go to the beach. I generally, because I don't drink, I'm up a little bit earlier. People hate sharing a room with me because of that. But yeah, and then I get the gym done. I feel good. I feel energized. Um, I'm happy with a little disco pump, go down to the beach. Woo! What's not to love? Now, speaking of gyms, hotel gyms are notoriously rubbish. So plan ahead. You have no excuse if you do want to go to the gym. Google is your friend. And it's usually very easy to find local gyms with decent equipment so that you can do the workout that you want or that you need or maybe the, co the, the coach has given you. Now, I also, when I go to the gym, ask about day passes, week passes, or even a monthly pass. And I have been known, so I think it was in Sitges last summer, I was only there for six days, um, but they only did monthly passes or it was going to be, you know, day passes. And the monthly pass worked out cheaper and it was cheap work. It worked out cheaper than my gym at home. So even though I was not going to use it for a month and I only used it for the best part of a week, it still worked out quite well. So don't just be put off by the fact that, you know, I can only get a monthly pass it's absolutely fine. Just do it. And then you don't have to think about it because you have a monthly pass. You can go any time during the fortnight that you're away or two weeks for people that don't say fortnight, as I've learned. Um, of course, you can always do a little circuit in the hotel or maybe on the terrace. Uh, you've got the resistance band with you potentially, and you can use YouTube for a little workout or speak to your coach for a little holiday workout plan because they will have something that they can give you. I do that with my clients if they want one. Now, what happens when you get home from holiday? Chances are you've probably put on a bit of weight. And I'm saying weight. I'm not necessarily saying you've put on fat. But you've probably eaten more. You've been probably on a plane. You've probably had more salt. You've probably had a bit few more carbohydrates than you normally have. All of those things can impact how much you weigh because of uh, water retention, because of food volume, because of constipation. I know that happens when I've been on a plane. Um, I feel bloated. So what I'd say is do not jump on the scale the minute you get home or even the next day or even the very next day. I tell my clients to give themselves at least five to seven days to just get back into a regular routine before they then check their progress. As I say, you will probably have put on weight. And there's no point in freaking out the next day when you see a higher number on the scale. Give yourself between five and seven days, just get back on in routine, and then after five or seven days, then start measuring your progress again. So as I say, wait a week before weighing yourself because any minor weight fluctuations will have probably evened out by that point. And if they haven't, then it's time to just knuckle down and tick the action boxes. Get back on track. Do not jump into the fuck it bucket. That's the worst thing you can do. Okay. Sorry, I need some water. It's a bit hot. What I also do and get my clients to do is reflect and learn. Look back on your holiday and ask yourself, 
What strategies worked for you? You know, was it the power of two? Was it having more protein? Was it doing the training? And think about where can you improve next time? What could you do better next time? What could you do differently? Why did you make certain choices? Did you own those choices? And use this reflection to guide your next holiday or your next adventure. Because I think a successful holiday for me is one where I have made amazing memories. And I have no regrets about the food I've eaten. You know, I hope the food is part of the experience. And if I'm choosing my indulgences carefully, then they play a big part of that. So that's the holiday. Okay, I think we've got time maybe to talk about barbecues. And I think the same thing can go for picnics and other trips. Um, because you can have your barbecue and you can eat it too. Try not to fret too much about the food and drink on offer. Instead, maybe look forward to these occasions and plan for them. Plan, okay? Um, maybe prioritize lower calorie days uh, on days you're not attending a barbecue. So maybe on the days around it. Now, if you're going for a big boozy barbecue every day of the summer, that's not going to be in alignment with your fitness and fat loss goals. But if you are just going to a barbecue maybe on a Saturday, then maybe on the Thursday, Friday, um, you maybe have some lower calories so that you bank some calories those days and then enjoy the Saturday without feeling guilty on the day. That doesn't work for everyone, but it is a good tool for some. Try it, see if it works for you. But remember, grilled food on a barbecue is actually a really, really good way to cook food and keeps the fat content down. So it's lowering calories and it can be incredibly tasty. Now, if you're on a health kick or you're still looking to lose some fat, an invite to a neighbor's barbecue could potentially feel like a bit of a minefield. And you're probably thinking, well, I might have some overcooked sausage like incinerated sausage and some sunburn. What else can go wrong? And you're probably thinking the barbecue could push you off track. It doesn't necessarily have to. So here are some tips to help with, you know, attending barbecues or picnics or things like that. The same goes with going to the beach. I'm not a fan of eating at the beach. A memory of having sandwiches with sand in it. Then you get sand in your teeth and that's just rank. Things to be aware of at barbecues and picnics and things like that food pushers we all know them don't we because as soon as you turn down you know like a second burger i know brian from across the road is right there swooping in with another burger and saying i know kind of a well-intentioned oh oh go on one more won't hurt and okay it won't hurt um, but it's not going to help you with your goals. And even if they say, we can't let this go to waste, we're not human beings. But little does Brian know that one more could actually take you out of your deficit, which means it'll take you longer to achieve your fat loss goals. Now, you, again, same as when you're on holiday, you can make the choice here, okay? What is more important to you? Are you saying yes to your fitness goal um, by saying no to the extra burger? Or are you saying yes to the extra burger and it's okay to just delay your fitness goals a little bit further? But Brian's guilt tripping and pushiness can, you know, it can make even the strongest willed person break. So you need to be firm. Remember, you're an adult. You can tell Brian no. Now, it's hard to imagine a barbecue without booze and a Pims, a cheeky Pims, if you're in the UK. We're a big fan of that. Um, but those summer drinks can be pretty calorific. Um, particularly the beers and the cocktails and things like that. And they add a serious calorie punch. So add to this that after a few, you're probably going to make some poor nutritional choices and you're more likely to cave into the fourth burger um, and, you know, even more higher calorific food and more drink, then you're probably going to come out of your calorie deficit quite quickly. Next up, you're probably being too polite particularly if you're British, you probably don't want to offend your host by refusing, you know, their carefully prepared food. But overindulging for the sake of politeness, that can really derail your efforts. Seriously. So you don't need to be polite. Now, there's often an element of giving into temptation when you're at a barbecue too. Like those sausages and dollops of creamy potato salad, they're delicious. 
But when you've been working hard towards your goals, the temptation is very real, especially if you've not had any of these things in a while. So just be aware of that. And that's why it's really important to maybe think about, you know, what can I do to, I don't know, feel more full so that I don't give in to those temptations. Next up are saboteurs. So I'm not talking about the internal saboteur. That's a whole different uh, discussion. Sorry about the notification. But you'll have saboteurs at the barbecue or at the picnic. And these folks aren't just pushy about food. They're the people that question your, you know, your entire fitness and fat loss journey. So it's good to be prepared for these types of people because you can expect passive aggressive comments like, why are you dieting? You look fine as you are. And, you know, these unsolicited opinions can, you know, create some self-doubt. And at worst, they can make you veer off your plan. And I think it's important to know that they are often made to make the person who's saying them feel better about themselves. It's nothing to do with you. It's just that you changing yourself makes people question what's potentially wrong with them. And there isn't anything. It's just that you're on a different journey, but it feels like you're going on a different journey to them. And that can be quite scary for the people left behind. Okay, I feel like I've just handed you a little bit of a bag of fear here. So what are you meant to do with temptations, saboteurs, uh, Simon's you know, secret sauce and all those things? What are you meant to do? Because it can be a bit mind blowing. So here are my top 10 tips on how you can still enjoy the best of summer while sticking to your fitness goals. First of all, if it's a barbecue or a picnic, do it yourself, okay? You're in charge of it all. Throw the barbecue yourself. Just do it. You're in charge of it. Um, you're in control of what the meat is, uh, the other food is, um, what drink is there. You do not have to have anything that, you know, you've not prepared yourself. And it's the same when you go to a picnic. Um, I had a client who went to a picnic a couple of weeks ago, and she ended up, you know, having all the share food, but it's absolutely fine to maybe have a little bit of it, but you don't have to. You could just have the food that you've brought and the food that you've prepared, which might be, I don't know, packets of grilled chicken from Marks and Spencer's and some of their really lovely salads that they do. Oh, I miss Marks and Spencer's. Top tip number two, even if you're going to a barbecue, is to bring your own food. So not just at picnics. Quite often, hosts will want you to bring you know, um, something to barbecue or some, a dish. So if you can prepare a few, you know, more nutritional dishes to share, then you know what's in them, but you'll also be contributing to the spread. So it's not like you're doing anything, you know, not social, anti-social. Top th number three is, I'm not sure I like this one so much, but it can help. It's just about keeping shtum about your fitness plans. Because the less you talk about it, the less kind of ammunition you give, you know, the food pushers and the saboteurs to question your plan. Alternatively, and I do prefer this, if you know you're with a supportive crowd, I mean, hopefully they are your friends, just tell them and ask them to help keep you on track. What's the worst that can happen? I know we've talked about those people who can, you know, question you, the saboteurs, but if you're with supportive people and they're genuinely your friends, then they will be supportive. Top tip number four, keep calm and carry a drink. Keep something in your hand. That sounds dodgy. <laughs> I didn't mean it. But even if it's like sparkling water, uh, non-alcoholic gin and tonic, uh, a low calorie beer or something like that. If you have something in your hand, we've talked about this earlier, no one's likely to pest you with, you know, boozy drinks if you've already got one. Top tip number five, focus on your protein. Protein and veg, I would say. So having grilled chicken, fish, you know, oh my God, vegetable skewers, barbecued, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really colorful, you know, pepper, mushroom, onion, red onion, lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, really tasty and very low in calories, but super nutritious too. Full plate, no debate. Now I would suggest, you know, filling up your plate with those veggies and lean proteins. If you have a full plate, it's very unlikely somebody's going to try and, you know, push more food onto your plate if it's already full. Number seven is uh, avoiding those, you know, really calorific condiments and marinades. A little sauce might seem harmless, but the, the calories really all quickly add up. And while, of course, no food is bad, just remember that a tablespoon of olive oil can have around 120 calories. Okay, and that can be, you know, 
what, 15% of perhaps a small woman's daily intake. That's quite a big chunk. Number eight is um, eat before you go. That might seem a little bit strange, but having a, having a meal that you've tracked before you go, that can actually help curve your cravings and keep you from indul overindulging. It's the same as about not going to the supermarket on an empty stomach, because then you just go wild in the aisles. Um, so I would suggest eating before you go is a good tip. Number nine, if eating beforehand doesn't work for you, you can try fasting before the event, so before the party. And you could save a calorie budget for the party and just, you know, fill up there instead. However, I would say just be careful you're not hangry when you go by the time you get there or so ravenous that you completely overeat. So it's a fine balance. I I think it's something you've got to try. And if it works for you, great. And if it doesn't, you just learn from it and move on. Um, and number 10, the last tip, and this is a big one, and it's one that a lot of us struggle with. It is learning to politely refuse. It is absolutely okay to say no. And, you know, we've talked about this already today, but remember, you're in control of what you eat and drink, not the host of the party, not the other people at the party. You're in charge of you. You're an adult. Be an adult. Okay, I think it's time to finish up because I've been talking for a while. But ultimately, summer is for living. It is not for stressing about potential fitness damage. And the reality is that even with a busy social life, you can still make progress in your fitness journey. As long as you strike that balance and prioritize your health and your fitness when you can, and you have a long-term vision, you can still enjoy the summer to the absolute max and stay on track with your fitness goals. It is not that dichotomy of have fun or stay fit or get fit. You can absolutely do both. So here's to making this summer absolutely unforgettable because remember, life is short. You deserve to look great and feel awesome at every age. Um, you know, I'm in my late 40s now. If you've convinced yourself it's too late or impossible to lose fat or get fit or sculpt the dream body, I can help you change that narrative. Because I'm proof that you can, you know, do it. You can still live your best life at the same time. So if you want to redefine your journey um, and join a community of strength, resilience, confidence and joy and live an extraordinary life, then please do get in touch. I would love to hear from you because I would love to help you smash your fitness goals and build a rock solid mindset and revitalize every aspect of your life. Because I think having a fitness, or being strong, fit, and healthy body is like the best foundation uh, for helping you excel in every aspect of your life. So if you work with me, we will nail your why. And we'll, what we'll do is we'll look, you know, look at working out your core values to help drive positive changes um, and build healthy habits to help you unlock your full potential. I'll coach you in all things mindset, training, nutrition, lifestyle, and help you cut through the noise and focus on everything that matters, which is empowering you and your success. So if you've enjoyed this, please like, share, and subscribe, because I hope to do some more. Um, but yeah, I'm Coach Stephen White, and it has been an absolute pleasure being with you today. I hope you find that useful. If you did, please make some comments below, and uh, let's speak soon. All right, take care. Bye.